Okay, hi everybody. So this is uh, an evolution on the hashlang PLAI of, uh, of Shuram. So this is in the context of uh, programming language course. So this is for uh, a fourth year engineering student at the University of Chile, where basically we are teaching the uh, Shuram's book, first edition, uh, two thirds of the course. And the last third is about uh, basically building objects uh, using macros uh, on top of it. So the background of the student is that they have done some introductory course with Python, then they do some Java and some C. So there are, uh, there's quite some re syntactic resistance when, we, when I start uh, uh, using uh, Scheme first. So I have also a kind of startup thing on functional programming in Scheme. Uh, so this one is in Spanish to soften the, the transition. The rest is in English. And um, one of the things that I do when I teach, I just program with Dr. Racket on the, on the screen. Uh, so screen estate is an important factor of, uh, of the teaching language that I want to use. OK, so for those who don't know uh, Hashlang play with an I uh, at the end, it basically provides defined type and type case uh, for defining uh, structures with variants and to do pattern matching on, the, on those structures. OK, so. I'm not going to say anything really deep uh, in this talk. It's really just about tweaking some details that we figure out uh, after teaching these uh, courses like 10 times, uh, kind of uh, ease the, the, the presentation. So one of the things is that, uh, OK, we say that scheme has this uh, nice uniform syntax and so on. But if you look at the way you define the data variant, the way you pattern match on it, and the way you construct it, it's uh, three different forms. right? Uh, so that's a bit uh, slightly confusing for students, at least at the beginning, to get started. Uh, the other thing is that uh, at some point we go through, uh, through Haskell uh, so that they <coughs> experiment with lazy evaluation. And uh, there they see, uh, of course, pattern matching uh, in its full glory. And uh, in the playbook, the uh, pattern matching is used uh, through type case. So for instance, this is the interpreter that does the value uh, the store passing style for, for state. And if you see the, the sequence of uh, four, four boxes to interpret the box and then get back the, the box value, and then you interpret the other one, you chain those type case value store, and then you pattern match on the only variant, and then you do type case again and value store. So this goes way, 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 way towards the right uh, quite easily. And uh, the, yeah, with all, with all the. We all know the Bible about uh, how to write uh, in Racket. And so it, it's good to avoid uh, in increasing the indentation level too much. To some extent. <laughs> but to some extent, I, I actually, the, I'll, I'll show you three letters that, that solve it better. Uh, so this is, for instance, the, the snapshot view of one of the well, it's the worst case for, for type case, right? It's the, 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 the one with uh, st uh, va uh, variables and, and, and boxes. So you, you see that the profile of this is not quite, uh, quite nice. And the other thing is, OK, for macros, um, so as I said, we teach objects uh, building um, uh, an object-oriented system within, within Scheme with macros. And define syntax rule is great, except the, the, the very long name. But apart from that, once uh, you want to go be beyond define syntax rule, then you have to explain that no, you can't. So you need actually something more if you want to have keywords and if you actually want to do these uh, non hygienic captures of, uh, of symbols like the it uh, here or self in the, uh, in when we build object systems. Uh, then there's quite some noise. So everything that's in red is actually not part of the, of the information. Right, so that's a, a good proportion of what you write is actually not what you uh, want to explain. And here my goal is not to teach them uh, uh, how to become macro programmers, but I just want to give them just the minimum so that they can uh, then build their own object system and, and build on that. OK, so as uh, Matthew told us in the, this morning, the, there is a one good thing about Racket is that if, I, we, if you give me a fish, then I can think about different fishes. Uh, <laughs> Then they can create other ones. Right? So I don't know which one is PLAI and which one is PLAY. <laughs> I'll, I'll, let you <laughs> I'll let you choose. Uh, OK, so uh, Hashlang play. So 
basically has four stuff. Three, so the fourth one is in parentheses because it's not yet uh, fully worked out, but the I'm going to talk about the three first ones. So def type, def, and def mac. So def type, the ID, uh, well, so I, I've discussed this a bit on the list. So it's a lightweight and uniform way to uh, basically define the, uh, structures with variants uh, that solves the, the issue that, I, that we had with uh, uniformity. So if this is the old version, this is the new version. You see that just... Uh, just looks as it uh, as it looks. You just say what what you want, and the same form is used to to define the structure and to. Uh, sorry. Yeah, contracts gone. Ah, you solved the problem that way. Yes. Genius. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, but but yeah. So uh, after after uh, trying to adopt PLA typed and then having facing other problems and then at the end it was like okay if. Those guys are, are used and are going to compare with what they do in Python and stuff like that. So, okay, I can talk about contracts later on. And on day one, they don't need to. At least this is day one lecture, and, and, and this is syntax that they can resi really see. So, at some, I remember m mentioning that on the list, and then the question was, okay, what's the point with, with respect to uh, just using struct? So, this is the grammar of the one of the largest thing that is in PLAI. So, if you define it. Uh, uh, we've just a struct, normal struct in a, uh, in in racket. Well, everything that's in color here again is uh, noise compared to what you w just want to say. And in PLA, it's just directly mirrors the the grammar that you uh, you are studying. So it's just a lightweight uh, version of it. So then um, the other thing we introduce is def. Okay, so that's just match defined except it's shorter. Uh, so. And no, that's also something that's been discussed at some point on the mailing list uh, a couple of years ago or something like that. So well, we just tried it out and actually it works quite well. So this is the example and this is the version with def. So we just use pattern matching. Uh, so the thing that you don't get wi just with the local define that you don't get the pattern matching. So you would have to use a local uh, and with a match define or a define match, uh, whatever. Uh, okay, so this is quite nice and in the, of course, we we don't increment the level, and we do pattern matching in place. So they, they know Python; they can do that since CS1 for them. So they are happy to find it back. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm. I'm. I think pattern matching is its good thing versus uh, the dots for accessing fields. But okay, that's. Debatable. Okay, so this is the profile we had about this interpreter, and this is the the version now, uh, and so very uh, powerful number. So it's a bit more compact, but the most interesting thing is that the the, the right drift goes from uh, 53 characters to the right to just 16. So for me, that's uh, that's a good uh, a good outcome when I have to project code and scroll and so on. And finally, we have uh, defmax, so that's defined syntax rule on steroids. So that's a uh, uh, sh shameless adaptation of Eli's uh, old uh, defmax uh, version, but with uh, optional parameters now. So remember, that's what we had to write. So now with defmax, you just basically write as a uh, defined syntax rule, but you have two optional parameters, which are keywords and captures. So you just define, OK, this is a macro. And it has three keywords and it captures this identifier and that's it. Yeah. Actually, not exactly because it, it uses syntax parse uh, inside, but uh, as good as I could make it, so I, I'm, I'm sure it's not the, the best way to make it, but it's, it works. <coughs> so yeah, so then, then obviously I can just, in the stepper, just say that defmac is a primitive macro so that they don't see the the ugly details and and for me it, I, I want basically a full lecture just with that because the the concept of hygiene is simple but then going into the syntax case with syntax the tomb syntax and so on that was taking me an extra lecture just to to give them background that in the end is not so fundamental for what I'm I'm teaching them okay so that's it basically so we have def type 4 as a convenience for defining the variance def as a short uh, match defined def mac as I said as a Define syntax rule with uh, with optional arguments and adapt it from Eli's code, and we are haven't quite yet. And obviously, I found the solution this morning in the hotel, but I didn't have time to do it. To uh, we are trying to have defun 
to uh, be the defined for uh, functions, but with a unification with defined match, so that uh, you get the other thing to trying to explore with Haskell-like uh, equations, basically. So the objective here was to simplify definition, foster the use of pattern matching, and for that, we were, we were trying to unify non-pattern matching forms with pattern matching forms, and the cost to pay for that is to actually uh, disunify define, <laughs> which uh, you can't use uh, the same form to do pattern matching or to do the convenient uh, function definition. But o overall, we found that uh, this, this brings us more than what we, than what we lose. OK, and it's already uh, in, the, in the catalog, so you just have to do that. Thank you. What was it? Sorry. You don't actually teach your students hash colon and capture do you? Yes, I, I need it for self. Yes. Yeah, I know there are, there are, there are, uh, I had discussions about that, but it, it's okay. It's like they I teach them hygiene. I teach them that it's a very bad uh, non-hygienic is a very bad default, and for uh, capturing this thing, so like this I eat. Uh, identifier, which is exactly how Schrams uh, teach it, uh, teaches it as well. Just simplify that part, and then I don't tell them that this is the last uh, word on the hygiene story. But as I said, it's not a course on on uh, super powerful uh, Ryan's level uh, macro writing. It's just uh, let, let's get an object system rolling. Okay. Let's thank Eric again. <laughs>